Welcome back. You're tuned in to Inside Out here on CNBC TV 18. And as promised, let's turn our attention to our Swatlight segment. Well, Vesuvius India is a stock in focus which has done well in the past one year and outperformed its peer group. But before we tell you about the company, let's give you a brief understanding about the industry which it belongs to. That's the refractory market, which is the 20 billion euro market globally, with RHI, Magnesita, as well as Vesuvius having close to around a fourth of the market. Remember, it's largely dominated by medium and small Chinese companies. The refractory market is approximately $1.5 billion here in India, with RHI's market share at around 30%. That's following the Dalmia OCL as well as high-tech acquisitions, while Vesuvius is at around 13%. Looking at the graph, well, you can drive that the top six players, well, they account for close to 70% of the market. Now, since India is expected to be one of the top three economic powers in the world over the next five years, the refractory industry is expected to see traction, driven by end markets of construction, autos, machinery, consumer goods, and energy. But it finds bulk of its application in steel, as it is a specialized ceramic which can withstand temperatures of more than 1600, which are used to control molten metal flow in the steel industry. The refractory industry, well, it can be said it's a proxy to the steel industry, whose capacity is targeted to double to around 300 million tons by 2030 here in India. Additionally, from sectors where it has exposure, it's just around half a percent to around 3% of the customer's cost. The India refractory's market growth is forecasted at a CAGR of around 6% between 2023 and 2025. There is an, also an opportunity to increase exports from India as India becomes a manufacturing hub. Well, in terms of numbers, the street was a little bit disappointed with the company's December quarter results. There was a mild degrowth on the top line. But the bigger problem was the disappointment on the margins, which got compressed due to higher input cost, inferior product mix, and also could be due to the year-end phenomena for the company. In the past four years, if you pull up the yearly chart, well, the revenues have grown at a CAGR of around 10%, with average margins in low teens. Now, on the valuation front, it trades at a bit of a discount to RHI Magnesita, but at a premium to its smaller peer, that's IFGL refractories. Well, let's run you through why some part of the street believes that it's calling for premium multiples. The company has solid parentage, as it's an MNC. It also has a clean balance sheet with cash of around 550 crores. That equates to around 18% of the current market cap. In terms of return ratios, its ROC is around 13%. But if you adjust it for the cash in its book, the core ROC is close to around 30%. And finally, in February 2023, well, the management announced a mega 500 crore investment over the next three to around five years. That's what could meaningfully result in a surge in revenues in the years to come, basically giving you revenue visibility. Remember, as of now, the company generates close to around 130 crores of a bit on the last reported gross block of around 250 crores. Well, let's wind this down then with the shareholding pattern. There are some marquee funds that hold stake in the company. And as this graph tells you, majority of the stake is held by the promoter entity. Well, we've run out of time on this edition of Inside Out. It's goodbye from Sonal and myself. But do write to us and tell us the companies you want us to discuss and want to hear about, we'll try to feature them on our show. Thanks so much for watching.